In this video, I'm going to present and prove a short result from complex analysis that you might use whenever you want to compute the residue of a function which has a simple pole. We'll then do two examples. So let me read through this result and then I'll rephrase it a little bit. Let p of z and q of z be polynomials of the complex variable z with no common zero, and suppose that q has a zero of order one at z naught. So q has a simple zero at the complex number z naught. Show that the residue of the function, which is p over q at z naught, can be evaluated by doing p at z naught divided by q prime at z naught. So the idea here is that you have a function f of z, which is a rational expression of the form p of z over q of z. Perhaps you're trying to do a contour integral for f, and z naught is a singularity inside your contour, so you need to compute the residue of f at z naught. All right, let me prove this formula. It's a short proof, and then we will do two examples. Since z naught is a simple pole, meaning it only appears in the factorization of the denominator q once, the residue of our rational function f at z naught is computed by taking the limit as z approaches z naught of the expression z minus z naught times f, or rather, to be more specific, times p of z divided by q of z. All right, here's what we're going to do is somewhat artificially bring in the expression q of z naught in the denominator. So I'm going to write the denominator as q of z minus q of z naught. And notice I haven't actually done anything here because q of z naught is zero. So this is a completely fair way to alter that denominator. Next change is I'm going to flip the expression z minus z naught and put it in the denominator by thinking of this. Maybe I'll write it, it's gonna look a little funny, but it's going to be one over one over z minus z naught. So normally that would be kind of a silly way to write that expression, but this way I can pair it up with the difference in outputs for q, and what that's going to give us is a difference quotient for q in the denominator. So this will be the limit as z approaches z naught of p of z all over the difference quotient q of z minus q of z naught that over z minus z naught. p is a polynomial, it's continuous. The limit as z approaches z naught for the numerator is p of z naught. Similarly, q is a polynomial, it's differentiable. And since z naught is a zero of order one, this derivative is going to exist and be non-zero. So the numerator goes to p of z naught, and the denominator goes to q prime of z naught, and we're done. So this limit goes to p of z naught over q prime of z naught. To try to convince you that this is actually useful, let me take you through two examples. In our first example, the function f of z is z squared over z squared plus one. So here, p of z is z squared, and q of z is z squared plus one. The roots of q are plus minus i, each is simple. So let's compute the residue of f at, say, i. Using the result that we just proved, we can say that the residue of f at i, I'm going to say that that's p of z divided by the derivative of q of z evaluated at z equals i, which is actually going to simplify to z over two evaluated at z equals i, which is i over two. Could have done that a little bit faster, but I wanted to do this to show you how we immediately get the other residue. So just looking at this, we can say the residue of f at negative i is just negative i over two. And that came out of looking at that middle expression. Jumping down to the second example, in this situation, f of z is one over z to the fourth plus one. That denominator factors into four distinct roots. Let's compute the residue of f at one of them, which is one plus i all over the square root of two. So again, using our result, we can say that the residue of f at one plus i all over the square root of two. Here, p of z is actually the constant one, and then the derivative of the denominator is four z cubed. We wanna evaluate that at our pole. That's going to be one over four times that number cubed. The algebra at this point is not too interesting. We've plugged in. 
That number cubed is actually going to simplify to negative 1 plus i all over the square root of 2. And at this point, you could keep working with that. If you evaluate this residue using the traditional limit approach, you would end up with similar expressions at the end. The advantage of this middle expression is that it gives us an immediate way to evaluate the residue of f at the three other singularities if we were interested in them. Okay, so if you're trying to compute the residue for a rational function which has a simple pole due to a zero in the denominator, I hope that you find this useful. Thank you for your attention.